Okay. Let's see. Looks like we got audio into OBS. That's a good sign. Oh. It was the wrong microphone. It's going to break if I change it. Check, check. Do we still have audio? Yeah, looks like we still have the same level going into OBS. It's really the one it should be on. And... Startup sound. Background music here. And then I'll get going. Okay. Oh, I kind of want that open. Let's see. Too late. Oh, I'm still there. Okay. Nice. Uh, all right. So, just jumping straight in today. Uh, today is of course Monday, so I've been working on Circuit Python today. I did a lot of um, PR reviews, testing, and stuff this morning. This afternoon, I'm going to be working on. Uh, learn guide, so I figured I would go ahead and hop on the uh, stream if folks want to see what the process of creating a, um, a learn guide is like. I know Scott did one on stream not too long ago either for the Raspberry Pi uh, Broadcom port uh, of CircuitPython. He started working on that guide on stream, um, and I will be doing a guide for the Nico Cat project. So. Uh, to start with, let's get the NicoCat thing loaded, because I think I have something else on my Pi Portal now. So I'm going to plug in the Pi Portal. And this NicoCat project I've worked on uh, for a couple of different streams at this point. So if you are interested in this project and you want to know more about the specific details, uh, feel free. You can ask in the Twitch chat or somewhere, but there are also a couple of previous videos where you can um, see basically this this application and how it was built and stuff like that. So let's go to CircuitPy right now. I think it's, yeah, requests, simple test from testing I was doing earlier today. I'm going to delete that. I am going to find this, code Nico. Whoops. Copy paste. So the last thing I did on this was the other night, and it was uh, make it go to wherever you touch. Also, let's do the light on this thing. We'll make this look better. Well, let's break this out. So it's kind of washed out and hard to see right now, but we can uh, let's do this. Flashlight, focus. I guess already pretty close to focused. Okay. Yeah, that looks a lot better. Uh, maybe zoom in a little bit. Get some of the cat hairs out of the way here. All right. Change the focus. Let's fix that. So we have this little uh, cute Nico cat animation. And uh, what I did the other night was if you touch on the screen, uh, which I'll do with the stylus because I happen to have it right here, it will put the little red uh, laser dot wherever you touch. And then the cat will run uh, to that to that location. So you can kind of lead the cat around by touching. You can use your finger as well. Um, or fingernail works pretty good too. It is a resistive touchscreen, so you do have to press and hold, um, you know, pretty hard, right? It's it's sensing you actually physically pressing it, and the, uh, I don't know, the resistance of the layer of the thing changes based on, the, like, the flexing of the screen, I think, something like that. So you do have to press it kind of hard. It's not like our phones, where it just 
um, is capacitive. It's just uh, closing the circuit or sensing your capacitance in your body. This you actually have to press on, uh, which is why you can also do it with stylus like I was. Do a stylus here. Um, so that's the last thing I did to it. And I need to basically take this new version and put it into the repo, uh, which is the learn guide repo. And then we'll make a new PR for that and then start on the actual guide itself. So here, learning system, we're gonna go fetch. Um, now we're going to go get checkout dash B, uh, update Nico cat from Adafruit main, no track. Okay. And close all of this. You can find, oh, what did I call it? I think maybe circuit Python. And I let me just double check the code we have here. Okay, it is all commented. This is the one that the formatter ran on as well. Okay, so I'm going to copy it from my Pi portal. I would like to. I may need to run and get one more device, actually. I would like it to fall back uh, gracefully and work on devices without a touchscreen. So we, of course, we added that new touchscreen functionality, um, but it'd be nice if it could do the minimum on things that don't have a touchscreen. Boy, my spelling in here is uh, not great, huh? So more, well, let me, let me paste this in, paste. I'm also going to take a quick look at the diff just to make sure nothing crazy changed. Only the stuff we expect. So like touchscreen, vector IO for drawing the dot. Moving to makes sense because we added the moving to feature. Here's moving to getter and setter. Okay, we updated it, so current state, if you're already in the state, you won't change again, which means that you won't reset the animation index. I remember fixing that. Uh, we added a helper function, get the center. Inside of update, handle when we're moving to a location. This is all the logic for that. It's got indented in. That's interesting, I guess. the. I don't know if the formatter did that or what. We're gonna run pre-commit, well, black. We're gonna run black again, so it'll undo that if it's, maybe my, uh, maybe PyCharm did that. I don't know why those really would've changed. They're not functional, it's just extra indention. Doesn't matter, be all right. Uh, okay. Touch cooldown, last touch time. We should move touch cooldown to the top it can be a configure, you know, configurable-ish, like you don't have to configure it if you don't want to. There's the same default, but if you want to like poke around with the code and learn how it works and deconstruct it or use it for other things, um, then maybe this variable could be helpful for you. Touch screen. Calibration. I should run the calibration script on my Pi portal. We just did that the other day on the TFT Featherwing. Ah, okay, this, uh, see, this is the exact kind of thing uh, why I checked this diff right here, because this I did not mean to keep. So right now the, I think this was while I was testing move two. I updated it so that the cat would start on, not the center of the screen, but three quarters of the way towards the right of the screen. But we actually do want to go back to the center. I think I'll just uh, change this here. I'm going to also change this on, 
on CodePy on my device. I don't know where this is, somewhere down here. Yeah. That way if I copy from one to the other again, we're not just like undoing this change. Uh, this we could remove, this was testing. So actually what I'll do is I'll just go through and make all of my edits here, and then I will go ahead and copy this back to the code pie. We have some comments to fill in as well. We could make a color variable for the, uh, the laser pointer dot. Okay. So if uh, Nico is not moving to a spot, then move the laser pointer off of the screen. Just minus 10, minus 10, so it doesn't get drawn. There's other ways we could hide it, but this is just kind of a quick, easy way to hide an object is to move it x, y coordinates off the display. We could get rid of this print. And basically make sure the cooldown is passed. Huh, actually this seems wrong. Let me go back to full size. So we should, uh... So if now is greater than the last touch time plus the touch cooldown, then set the last touch time to now. But we don't really want to update this unless they're touching, right? Last touch time should be... Last touch time should be the last time when they started touching, not just as soon as we pass the cooldown. So we're still in the learn guide code. I'm going to... I'm going to save the changes I have so far. I'm going to copy this. We're going to go to the CodePy. We are going to update it here and then start doing things like, I think this needs to be inside of here. We don't really need to print the point anymore, the touch point. This is moving the laser pointer dot to the XY coordinates that got touched. And then also setting the moving to, to that same location so that Nico will start walking towards it. Okay. So I'm going to save this and just make sure it still works as expected. This is actually probably why, yeah. Okay, yep. So there was some times where it felt like you had to press down for longer, and that's actually why, because that logic was broken, and now this is way... Uh, way more snappy, like I can press, I can press very quick. In fact, the cooldown, is the cooldown running? Yeah, okay. Yeah, we do still have the cooldown. Okay, nice, I'm glad. I'm glad I did that because, yeah, this uh, behaves a lot better now. It behaves a lot better now. It feels way more reactive because it, it, it would have been it would have been just randomly based on whenever you touched. If you got unlucky, then you'd have to wait a full second. But if you got lucky, then you wouldn't have to wait a full second. But it would always be just randomly from zero to one second. But now it's like what it was supposed to be the whole time, which is one second from the last time you touched. 
you haven't touched in over one second, then it's immediate right now. We could also raise it a little bit as well. So let's take that cooldown. This is the variable that controls that exact thing. We're going to put this up here, which is kind of like end user configurable type variables. We're going to make a comment for it. Um, how long in between, or how, how long to wait for next valid touch event? in seconds. I'm going to try 0 0.5 and see if that's like bad or anything. It would be nice, I think, to be able to um, do this kind of number here where you're moving your finger around and it's kind of following you. I'm curious, actually, if we even even faster. Does this have any adverse effects? I mean, you can't see the dot all the time because it's under my finger, obviously. But I, yeah, I like that. I kind of like that, actually. I mean, that's nice and quick. It's like live following. And it definitely gives the like... Oh, that's weird. Hmm. X, Y coordinates get off some. It certainly looked like it didn't really run to the dot. Be it registered like an extra touch of it, like that. So, one thing is, uh, it does. I feel like if it's no, okay, never mind. I was going to say, I feel like if it's running towards the left, it's a little more convincing that it makes it to the dot and kind of covers it up. But I think my eyes must have just been playing tricks on me, because that last time when it ran to the right, I feel like it looked equal pretty much to the left in terms of how close the cat gets to it before the, uh, the dot disappears. Scratch the top, so... Yeah, I like this, uh, I like this live... This live feeling here where you can just like drag your finger around in a circle and the cat continues to follow it. I think that's a nice touch. So I will actually just leave this at 10, 10 times a second. Because uh, we don't need we don't need events really faster than that. It wouldn't make too much of a difference and we do we may as well slow it down so as not to like really rev the uh, system any faster than we need to. Um one moment, I am gonna run and blow my nose real fast, but let's... Okay, yeah, I'll be right back.
Okay. We're back. And let's get this going. Go. Laser dot color. Is that how you spell laser? It's supposed to be a Z in laser. Laser is an acronym, I think. I don't know what it stands for. Light something? I... Laser? Is it actually an acronym? I want to say it is. Analogy? Laser. Microwave was replaced by light in the acronym. Yeah. Okay, L-A-S-E-R. That's the important part. Which I don't know. Did I get it right? Yes, ER. Yeah, okay. So uh, I'm going to go red to start with. But you could use whatever color you want, right? Especially if you uh, change the background color to be something that's more red. You know, you could use a green laser dot or blue or ink or whatever color you want. Dot color. So we'll use that later. Display background color. Hex notation. I call, call this hex notation as well. Laser dot color hex notation. We need three gated code fragment. Four hundred five lines. Oh, it's probably it's comparing it to code Nico maybe. It's like the we have two copies of this file. So when we make the laser dot, we need to use the right color. I think that's still hard coded. Yep. Laser dot color. There we go. We don't really need this print. Let's go ahead and add comments on the stuff that doesn't have it yet. So this is initializing the palette, initializing the laser palette. It's laser palette. Set the color, set the hex. Circle for our laser dot, add it to the group. Um, I'm going to also Let's see, why don't we break these out maybe? do these negative values so we start off the edge of the display It's shown until the location moves onto the display.
So it starts off the edge of the display. Won't get shown until the location moves onto the display. Okay. Update Nico right there. Yep. Yeah. If Nico. If we are. If Nico. If Nico is not moving to a location. Hide the laser dot circle by moving it off of the display. Okay, we get now if if enough if I'm gonna say if the cooldown cooldown has elapsed since last, since previous which event? I think instead of P I'm going to use touch touch lock touch location Location if anything being touched. Update the timestamp for cooldown. Enforcement. Move the laser dot to the XY coordinates being touched. Let's see. Uh, tell Nico to Nico to move the X Y coordinates being touched. Okay. Um. Need current touch from display overlay. Need current touch data from overlay. Last touch time. Previous touch event. Duplicated code fragment. Initialize touch overlay. And so this is the part where I want it to be conditional or um, maybe just try catch or something. Somehow we should uh, make it so that we can um, run on other devices without the touchscreen. Because I did try it on the Clue and on the um, Funhouse. Um, I got those set up last week and showed it on Show and Tell. So we can keep those uh, keep those working. Hopefully. 
Probably don't need both lines here. Initialize touch overlay. Once we add that, maybe we'll make a comment here that kind of clarifies that it's uh, optional. So this create background group. Uh, we should put some uh, create bitmap to hold solid color background. Create background palette. Set the background color into the palette. Create a tile grid. Show the background bitmap. And the tile grid. I'm also going to clarify up here, create a background group separate from main group so that it can be scaled. Saves RAM. So I've seen this in some PyPortal examples when they want to set the background, they'll make a bitmap that's like the size of the display. 320 by 240 is what it happens to be on the Pi Portal, but this concept is the same for any device. Um, I've seen code where it will make a bitmap that's the exact size of the display and then fill in every pixel of that bitmap to whatever color they want, right? This is a, um, it should save a little bit of RAM because the bitmap that it's allocating is only 20 pixels by 15 pixels but then the uh, group is scaling it times 16, which is making it actually big enough to cover the whole display. So I got these values by dividing the display size, 320 by 240. Uh, I divided that out by 16, or I, I did the multiplication to figure out you know, what was like a reasonably large multiple that I could use. That way my actual bitmap is uh, really, really small. Shouldn't take up nearly as much RAM as having the entire 320 by 240 pixels in the tile grid to the group. Add the background to the main group. Background group. Main group. This one is getting a little long. We're up to 500 lines of code already. It is a lot of comments, but it's on the higher side for a learn guide. I guess this is like a huge part of it though, right? This is almost 30 lines or something right here. I'm gonna put format just to try to clarify what this thing here is. Eight objects. Moving states. Scratching states. Just put other, other states, cleaning and sleeping, basically. States, so I should maybe leave a note about why we use this. What do we use this for? It's moving. All right, okay, so because if we're moving, then we have a chance to stop moving. 
and then if we were no if we weren't moving then of course we would begin moving after some time as well used to alternate between moving and non moving states Okay, it's looking like we've got our comments filled in pretty good. I'm gonna go ahead and save it and just make sure that everything is still working. Oh, nope, okay, 492. Ooh, looks like we messed up one of the colors. Background color or maybe laser color. Dot color. Too many? Do I have too many? FF zero zero. Yep, too many. There we go. Okay, so there we definitely did get that thing where it did not run through the dot. The dot was definitely like up here. Could be causing that though, because it doesn't. The vast majority of the time it does exactly what it's supposed to, which is run to the dot. Let's go up here. So it seemed like I was coming up from the top left down towards the bottom right. So we did go past it. So the cat turned to the left there, which makes sense. That's what it should do. Go up here and we're gonna come here like right there maybe. We should stop and move to the right when we get to about here. Doesn't it didn't seem to stop until it got to the bottom edge. Placing laser dot at which let's print that. Just, I mean it's moving the XY of the dot itself and that seems to be in the right spot anyway. Oh, is this spamming this? We made it, is that We are, look at that, okay, we can't not do that. I want to keep it for right now though, since we are kind of troubleshooting something in this area, maybe. Yeah, right now. So let's go up here. Let's get this and this, whoa. 
Uh-oh. That too. We're going up here. And we're going here. We got 312 by 159. Yeah. So basically, when we're approaching a dot that is to the right, and we're moving at a diagonal, we don't properly turn and head straight to the right when we are vertically aligned with the dot. But the same thing going left, we do. So if we're moving left, it works as intended. We turn and stop moving diagonally and start moving. Let's go down here. Start moving uh, sideways. I'm going to go here and let's look. Do we have the same problem if we're moving diagonally up? No. So specifically, if we're moving diagonally down, let's try diagonally up left. No. Yeah, okay, so specifically diagonally down and to the right seems to be where we have this issue. Yeah, okay. So let's look inside of update at the move to logic. So, our we made it is off also because it's not saying we made it until we get basically down to the bottom right corner. But in all the other states, it does seem to work. In all the other directions. So, if... Nico's X is less than the moving to location. And if the moving to location, so if the moving to location is in between Nico's X, which is the top left corner of Nico, and the far right edge, basically. So X would be the, the far left edge of Nico, or in between the far left edge and the far right edge, which is X plus the tile width. And then this is basically the same thing. So self.y is Nico's Y, which would be the top edge. So if the moving to location Y is in between the top edge of Nico the bottom edge of Nico. And it changes states. So that it seems okay to me. That logic seems okay. If we're moving to if the X of the place so some of this stuff should be more commented also actually.
if Nico is moving to a specific location. I.e. user touched. of the target location it's between the left and right edges of Nico the Y of target location is between the t top and bottom edges of Nico Gonna leave this for now, but it's probably gonna get taken out. This is gonna be okay. Change to either sleeping or cleaning states. Uh, clear e moving to get location. is actually the same if statement but the reason we have a second one of these is because it could have gotten set to none here in which case we don't want to do any of this stuff we have to check twice one out here because if we're not moving when we're out here then we don't need to do any of this but if we did this part and changed to not moving then we don't need to do any of the rest of it I guess we could Return. Well, no, we can't return because the animation occurs after. I guess we could do the animation first, and then maybe we could return from here. But I think it's more clear this way, maybe, at least to me. So, Nico is moving to a specific location. So... This is... If the X of the place that we're moving to is greater than our center point X, plus half of the config step size, which is how far we move with each step. So basically, if the place we're moving to is to the right of where we're at right now, this is a little bit more complex than simply just saying where we're at right now, but it is essentially just where we're at right now. This is our center location, and this is basically how big of a a hitbox we want to have essentially like how big the, the actual square that we're concerned with um, intersecting Nico and the laser dot if the target location is right of Nico then this one is If the target, yeah, if the target location is right of Nico. So then this one is if the target location is. So if the Y of it is greater than where we are at now. So greater than Y would be below us. If the target location is below Nico. Which then means that it is both to the right of us and below us. Move down and to the right. Which is the one state that we have a problem with. 
but let's keep going. And hopefully I, I think our problem may become clear as we talk through some of this. So this one is um, if the target location is, this is going to be above Nico, above Nico. It's the Y value of the target, and it's less than our location, essentially. Again, our center, and then this time we subtract, but it's the same concept of how big that hitbox is going to be. This is the size of the hitbox, basically. So if the target location is above Nico, move up and to the right. And then this is else, which means that it wasn't below us and it wasn't above us, which means it should be the same y position as us, which means that we should move directly to the right, move to the right. But somehow, one of these three must be wrong, because we're not properly ending up in this state. Print, turning to the right, turning to face right. Hey, thanks, Cornbread Ninja. Appreciate the raid. To face right. So let's see if that gets printed, which I assume it doesn't. So we're going to go up here to start. Hey, Toaster Fuel, how are you doing today? Up here. Going like right there. Yeah, go all the way down here. So it only said turning to face right when we got basically to the bottom, honestly, is what it seems like to me. So it would be nice if this didn't spam. We have this check inside of the current state setter. Doing today with the kitty. So we are basically just finishing up the code. The last thing that I did to it was make it to where it will go to wherever you're touching. So today I updated it to be a little bit more live. I can like drag my finger around and it will it will keep changing its, you know, direction live to follow wherever I put the laser dot. And then right now I'm trying to fix if you are moving down and towards the right. So I'm going to put it in the top left. If I'm moving down and towards the right, it should turn and start going directly to the right, like right about there but it's not, it's just going all the way down and right, down and right, all the way till the bottom. And then it runs along the bottom and then it thinks it hits it. But the same kind of concept like this one, if we're running up and to the left, it will turn to run directly horizontal when it gets in line with the dot. And same thing for down and left. So if I go up here, oh, Huh, well that one broke too.
Um, I don't think up and right is broken. I think only down and right. This was down and left. Although it did just seem like something went crazy. So here's up and right. But let's also do it this way. So it, I think it turned there, but it's also the wall there. Let's go down here. And then we'll go over here. And it should turn. Go. Okay, so it did start, it started going the wrong way. It started going down. Which is consistent. So that, that part does seem to be broken, actually. But that time it didn't. And it does turn horizontally, so why did it fail so many times? So maybe I'm touching it two places accidentally. No. Definitely touching it one spot. Ooh, well that's trickier, kind of. Because it's not doing the same thing every time. If current state is not state moving right. Do you want, I, I have a stylus. Thank you. Um, so only print if we were not already moving right. And then this same check happens inside of here. So this will make it spam less. I'm going to go up here. Got the Nintendo uh, DS stylus here. In the face right. Ooh, what is that one? Party popper, nice. Hey, thanks for the follow, uh, Toaster Fuel, appreciate it. I don't, maybe I haven't caught up. Oh, I have muted? Still be able to hear it? I don't know if it played the jingly thing. If it didn't play the jingly thing, then uh, consider this the jingly thing, me talking about it. Yeah, I need to figure out if that thing's still set up. Um, where are we at here? Okay, so I think probably something is wrong with one or more of these three. But I'm going to keep talking through and commenting the code, because that's essentially what I was doing, is commenting this stuff up, the most recent changes, and then uh, getting it ready to publish, and then I was going to start working on the guide. So this is else from here, which is basically if the X of the location we're going to is less than where we're at, which means to our left. If the target location is left of Nico. There was a screen deal, but heard no jingles. Okay. Maybe... Yeah, I didn't hear the jingles either. Somehow... I'll have to refresh that or something. Maybe this scene doesn't have it? I feel like I've heard it on this scene. Well, enough also if the scene didn't have it, it wouldn't have shown anything. I don't know. If it's to the left of us, I had this print statement, we'll get rid of it eventually. Uh, and see you, Cornbread Ninja. Hope you had a nice stream and everything. Let's go. If um, the Y is greater than where we're at. So if target location is below Nico. Move down and to the left.
target location. This is going to be above because a lower Y means above. The target location is above Nico. Down, nope, move up and to the left. So then we have else, same Y position. Actually gonna pull up to the previous line. Same thing up here. No, this one might be wrong. So the target was to our left. And then neither, it was not a, below us or above us, which means it was in line with us vertically, which means move to the left. And we have else here, if the target... All right, okay, so this is same X position, which I'm going to pull up again just to keep these all the same. And then we basically have above. Above and below. Although I didn't do the. Didn't do the hitbox size. But that's not. That shouldn't cause the down and right thing we have. In X position. it's not to our right or to our left. So this one is if target location is above. Nope, it's actually below. Below, Nico. Above, Nico. Downward, move upwards. I don't know if that should be plural or whatever. So these are different. Um, these should be should be the same as these. We should have. This. Yeah, did I get these backwards? Maybe one should. Maybe the other one should be. I did just kind of guess at these the other night. And so I did not actually change any code, I don't think, just comments. So I don't, I mean, we sh shouldn't be fixed or anything. It should still be doing this. So the part that's checking if we're at the same Y location does not work. But only when we're moving down and to the right? So our point is to the right of us.
So that point starts out below us, and we end up in the moving down and right state. It's to the right of us. We end up in the moving down and right state. While we're calling update over and over again, we're coming through here and it's still presumably being down and to the right of us, so our state's staying the same. Then eventually, should get to here. It doesn't seem like we are until we get to the bottom. Maybe this shouldn't actually just be else. Maybe we should say... Then uh, center point one minus if that's less than point, yeah, if that's less than. place we're going as well if the place we're going is in between this and center point and then this one would be plus oh I like the place where that broke You are the one that formatted it. You can't tell me the format's wrong. Why does... This makes me feel like I have a bracket or a parenthesis. Why does one instance of this have a warning and the other one doesn't? Union int any. Ah, so, uh, uh huh, uh huh, yes. Okay, there we go. This is why warnings in the IDE are very nice. Instinct was right too, I did have messed up brackets. So, Basically now this one is if the Y location of the place we're going is in between the top of the hitbox that we're interested in and the bottom of the hitbox that we're interested in, centered on ourselves, centered on Nico.
Top is less than it. Bottom is greater than it. Yeah. We still are not fixed. Still does break. Does the same thing. First value, second value, third value. So this will spam a lot, probably slow down the animations. Hmm. We only have this spam if we're moving to the right. 223. That's too low. 223 is too low. Yeah, 223 is too low. Well, the number is too high. It's too low on the screen physically. See here, this says placing laser dot at 306, 129. So most of the way all the way to the right. 320 would be all the way to the right. 240 would be all the way at the bottom. We got 130, which is somewhere around halfway. But then our middle thing here says 223, which is much closer to the bottom. So that's why we're always going to the bottom. Moving to 1. So why do we end up moving to the wrong place? So this is where we printed placing laser dot at. Hmm. And I mean, this is right, print setting, moving to, okay, format, just going to take another copy of this, Drupal, uh, here, okay, 
And you will have to... Excuse me for one moment, but I must go... to the restroom and then come back in a minute. I'll be right back. Okay, I think I might know what's wrong. We have some logic that its intention is to stop you from touching too close to the edge, basically. And what it does is just kind of artificially, if you touch too close to the edge, then it basically just moves the place that it registers your touch further inward. And I bet you that that logic is not working right for the right edge of the screen. I think when I'm touching close to the right edge, it's trying to do that sort of artificial changing it to, to clamp it, to bring it in some from the edge. Because uh, essentially we don't want it to be, we want it to be far enough in that there's actually room for Nico to stand by the edge and not start running off the edge, right? Like, Nico should not be able to be halfway off the top or halfway off the right. Um, so we made it so if you touch near the very close to the edge, it actually scoots it in some kind of automatically. I bet you my logic is wrong for the right side. Because, so we're in the top left. If I go, like, here, not really close to the edge, it works. So we only have the broken behavior when I touch too close to the right edge. Too close. When I trigger that logic that's scooting it in some. So then that logic is what's wrong. Which is inside of... Hmm. Moving to? Yeah. Okay, so new value coming in. If it's not none, set up two variables that initially are the same values that came in. So if the x value that came in is less than half of the tile width plus one. So our tile width is 32. Half of that is 16. Sixteen plus one is seventeen. If this is less than seventeen, 
then instead set it to exactly 17 in our case. If we had a different size tile, then it would be different. This one says if the place that came in, if the x of the value that came in is greater than the x, so the width of the display, minus tile width over 2, so this is our 16 again, minus 1. So in our case, this is uh, 320. Minus 16, which is 304, minus 1, so 303. So if the x that came in is greater than 303, then the clamped x gets set to exactly 303 instead of being greater than. Yeah, here's my... I, I bet you right here is my problem. This probably is supposed to be a one, not a zero is my guess. But let's keep stepping through. And also I should be commenting this code as well, actually. So let's do that. Uh, if, if new value is not none. Uh, initially start with the new value that is passed in. If x location of new value is within half tile size of left edge of display. Uh, override x to one half tile size away from the left edge of display. Okay, yeah, I th I'm thinking this has got to be it. Those zeros down there definitely seem suspect to me. If X location of new value is within one half tile size of right edge of display. Override X to one half tile size away from right edge of display. So similarly, this is now if the Y location of, whoops, we can't just do that though, can we? If Y location of new value is within one half tile size of top edge, top edge of display, override Y to one half. This is kind of repetitive, but it's better to be clear, I think, at least. Override Y one half tile size away from top edge. And then this is supposed to be if Y location of new value is within one half tile size of bottom edge of display, but it's not, it is wrong because this is X and not Y, It should be one for Y. And this should be the height instead of the width of the display, which is also one. This is the tile height, which makes sense. The Y location that we're going to, is it greater than the display size height, which is 240 minus 16 minus 1. So 240 minus 16 is 224 
minus 1, 223. So if the y value we're going to is greater than 223, sounds about right. Then the location of the new value is then one half tile size at the bottom of the display, bottom edge. So that's where our y is greater than 223. Then override y to one half tile size away from bottom edge. Then set it to clamped x, clamped y, which makes sense. So now I bet, hopefully, that we are fixed now. So go to the top left. We'll touch close enough to the edge that it triggers that logic. And... If we have done it right, then it will turn to the right. We did it. It turned to the right. I've never been so happy to see an animated cat turn to the right. I think. I can't think of an instance where I've been happier to see an animated cat turn to the right. I've never worked on an animated cat before either, though, so it's kind of my first chance. And I'll just double check, too, if we... Because we saw this earlier, if I don't go, if I go in some, if I go in further, it wasn't broken previously, and it's still not broken now. Okay, so let's do some of the other edges too. Let's touch close to the bottom edge. Let's touch close to the top edge. This one should turn up. Okay, did. I'll do bottom edge again. This one should turn down. Turn down for what? Turn down for getting the laser dot. That's what. There it is. Okay. Um, let's go here. This one should turn left. It does. Up here. This one should turn up, but it's probably not going to have the room. It's going to be diagonal all the way. That's fine. This one should turn right. And it does. Okay. I think we're good now. Okay. So, there we go. Live troubleshooting, live debugging. We found the bug. It was here. Somebody... Somebody was using the x values instead of the y values when they were trying to determine the logic of where it was at. I don't know who that person might have been, but luckily we found it and fixed it. Um, so this is set update the moving to location, moving to target location, moving to target location. Else, uh, this is if it was none. So if it was none, then just clear it, set it to none. Clear, so none means no, means not moving to a target location. Okay. So let's go find our prints and take them out. We made it, we don't want that. This we don't want. Let's just do this. Print. Turning to face right. Yeah, we don't need that. Oh. Uh, and yeah, we don't... I put this in to slow down the amount that it was spamming. But since it's not going to print at all, it's not going to... It's not going to spam, so it doesn't matter. And we do have the debouncing check inside of here to, to basically apply that same logic that the if statement was doing. Um, moving to. We don't need this. Placing laser dot at. I'll leave that one commented out. I don't usually like to leave like commented out code necessarily unless it's like 
set up for a different type of device or something. In this case, I think I'll leave it because if somebody was going to like modify the script to do something else, like maybe they want to maybe they want to modify it to not use the laser dot. Maybe instead of the laser dot, they want to use this mouse like inside of the sprite sheet. There is a mouse. This thing. Maybe somebody wants to do that instead of the laser dot. This print could be helpful because it's like when it gets touched, it's telling you where it got touched. So this would be where you would want to set the location of your mouse or whatever else you were doing if you were going to change it. You know what would be kind of funny would be to... Uh, Now I'm debating, do I want to do it? I think I'll leave it for now. You know what would be funny though is um, if we took a mouse, like a computer mouse, if we took the icon for a computer mouse and we put that on the display where you touched so that Nico actually followed your mouse, which for folks that don't know, this whole thing came from this program, uh, Nico, Nico Cat program. Ooh, I don't know if I'm gonna, Nico. Yeah, Nico's, uh, this thing, Nico software, which ran on old school Macs, I guess, and a bunch of other platforms. But there is a, uh, a Linux one that's on apt. So I was able to get it. And so now, like, you can see the cat that is there and it will follow my mouse around. Um, it would be kind of funny if we put an actual picture of a, of a computer mouse in the CircuitPython one. Even though there's not really a mouse in CircuitPython. Especially because there's not really a mouse in CircuitPython. Alright. Uh, tell Nico to move to the XY coordinates being touched. Yeah. Cool down, is that supposed to be two words or something? I'm going to leave it. Okay. So the other thing I'm going to do is look in the class. This code's basically broken down into Nico animated sprite class and then the user code that makes use of that class. Basically, I'm going to walk through this code real quick and make sure everything seems fine. How many pixels the cat will move for each step? How likely is the cat to stop moving? Cleaner sleep? Lower number means more likely to happen. How likely the cat is... We could say Nico here. I feel like most of the docs we refer to the cat as Nico instead of the cat. which I'm not sure if Nico is supposed to be the cat's name. I think that's actually just Japanese for cat, but I've been treating it like a proper name for the cat. How likely Nico is to start moving after scratching the wall? Lower number means more likely to happen. Happen. Minimum time to stop and scratch in seconds. Larger time means scratch for longer, two seconds. Uh, capital, so I don't do that everywhere. I'm not very consistent. I tend to not use complete sentences for my comments. But then sometimes I have two sentences and then I don't know if I should put the period for it and then the upper case, but then like, here I did a second sentence and I didn't put the uppercase or the second period. Or the first period, I don't know. State object indexes, last time an animation occurred. Index of the sprite within the current animation that is currently I'm going to call this currently running or currently animating. Index of the sprite within the current animation. 
the current animation. I think running that's kind of um redundant, right? Index of the sprite within the current animation. Currently running animation. Last time the cat changed dates, used to enforce minimum scratch time. Minimum scratch time, which was up here. State objects. That's the format they're in, which is a tuple. ID is the first element, animation list as a tuple is the second element. Step sizes as a tuple is the third element. And that's step size X, step size Y. The animation list can be as many sprites as you want. Zero to many. So moving states, ID is one. Animation is these two. Moving step is to the left by one config step size, which is 10 in my case. So moving up, ID, animation, so on and so forth. This is all fine. Scratching states, these work the same, but the animations are different. Different IDs in the animation list, and also these ones don't move. So they have uh, movement steps of zero. Other states, cleaning, you can tell this one has a much longer animation. No movement. State sleeping, this one has the longest animation because it yawns a couple of times before it starts sleeping. And then there's two states for Z's, so the Z's go back and forth a couple of times. Then it wakes up also, all as part of the same animation. States count as moving. Used to alternate between moving and non-moving states. Current state private field. Current animation list. Let's say a little more specific list for the currently running animation. List of sprite indexes for the currently running animation. Okay, Nico animated cat sprite extends display out tile grid, manages changing the visible sprite image to animate Nico in its various states. Also manages moving Nico. Steps in the direction that it's facing. Just changing the visible sprite image. Animate Nico in its various states. Also manages moving Nico. Moving goes location by the step size in the direction we go spacing I don't want to get super wordy in the definition of this but you kind of want to at least hit the high level points of what the class does Animation time, how long to wait in between animation frames, units is seconds, default is one third of a second, well, three tenths of a second. Tuple size display, tuple containing width and height that a display, default values come from board.display. Used to determine whether or when we are at the edge of the display, so we know to start scratching. The display size was not pressed. Try to use the defaults from board. Runtime must pass display size if not using built-in display. Okay. 
Use the display size that was passed in. Was passed in. Use it. And two is none by default. Load the sprite sheet in the palette. First color. Get down. Bad kitty. The bad actual kitty. Open up on the counter. I think there's no counters for Nico to get on. Make the first color transparent. Create the sprite tile grid as self. Initial location is zero. Initial location. Initial def default. Initial location. It's top left corner. Set the animation time into a private field. Advanced animation index helper function to increment the animation index. Wrap it back around to zero after it reaches the final animation in the list. Don't return anything. Moving to tuple with XY location that we're moving towards, or none if not moving to anywhere specific. Turn optional tuple. Setter. This will keep the same doc string as this one, I think, since they're the same property. So tuple with XY location that we're moving towards, or none if not moving. This is actually the logic we fixed. So this has got some nice comments now. Update the moving to target location. None means not moving to animation time. How long to wait in between frames? Units of seconds. So that's our 0 0.3, the default value. You could change it if you wanted. Uh, using the setter right there, in fact. Current state. Current state object gives this little format again. Let's do this format colon. ID animation list step sizes, turns a tuple, current animation state. Oh, well, the current state object, which has the animation list inside of it, but wouldn't be a correct way to call it an animation state exactly. Uh, current state setter, new state, ignore. If we are already in the new state, actually, let's say only change if we aren't already in the new state, because this logic is actually checking if we're not in the new state, right? So our comment should be the same, even though, like, logically, it still made sense. Update the current state object. Update the current animation list. Reset the current animation index to zero. Show the first sprite in the animation by setting it on the tile grid. Update the last state change time right now so that Nico knows that it changed states right now. It uses to know how long it's been in a current state, which is ultimately used to uh, decide when it's time to stop scratching. It has a minimum scratch time and then a random chance to stop scratching after that. So it can scratch longer than the minimum time and it will randomly decide when to stop, but it has to be at least the minimum. So that's what it uses that time for. Anima if enough time has passed since the previous animation, then execute the next animation step. Changing the currently visible sprite and advancing the animation index, it returns a boolean. True if an animation frame occurred, spelled correctly. False if it's not time yet for an animation frame. The time to do the animation step. Update the visible sprite. Advance the animation index. 
update the last animation time to now. Return true. Not time yet, so return false. Is moving. Is Nico currently moving or not? Returns a boolean. True. If Nico is in a moving state, false otherwise. Center point. Any doc string on this one? Earn tuple. XY location of Nico's center point current. Uh, we're going to call the center point current xy coordinates go is centered on. It's kind of restating the same thing here. I don't know. I mean, the property is basically the thing it returns. Maybe there would be a better way to do that, but I'm just going to leave it even though it's a little redundant. I need to update my stubs this exists now my stubs don't know about it yet update attempt to do an animation step move if in a moving state change states if needed I almost want to do like. I almost want to like make these explicitly kind of their own. Step if in a moving state. I almost like I, I think I like having these as a list because it makes it really clear that there are three independent sub steps essentially, right? This is basically doing all three of these each time you call it. Sometimes some of them take effect, sometimes they don't. Like sometimes we attempt to animate and it's not time yet. Sometimes we're not in a moving state, so we don't actually need to move. Sometimes there's no need for us to change state yet. But we essentially try all of these each time through. Doesn't return anything. Nico's in a is moving to a specific location, i.e., because the user touched. So this stuff I think we commented earlier as well. Yeah. So this ended up not really making a difference. I guess we could put this back to else. Oops. Yeah. Okay. I think I like that being else just because it's, I, mean, I guess it's less explicit, but it does get rid of some of the massive jumble of logic, basically. And it matches this one since we didn't have that stuff. And this one. Empty animation. We did do an animation step. If Nico in a moving state, random chance to start sleeping or cleaning. 
basically we, we it's like we're rolling a dice basically we take a random number and if we got a zero then we'd go ahead and change states and we further get another random choice between cleaning and sleeping else we were not moving currently in a scratching state check if we've scratched the minimum time random choice to start moving so we Basically roll a dice. If we rolled a zero, then we start moving. We take a random choice of all the moving states to decide which direction to start going next. If we're sleeping or cleaning or another complex animation state, I'm just going to actually, I think, just say if we're sleeping or cleaning. I don't really have any other animation states. If we've done every step of the animation, So that means if the current animation index is zero because it advances after it runs. So we would have advanced from the final index wrapped back around to zero. Then we know we made it to the end. So then we change to a random moving state. So basically if we finish a non-moving animation, sleeping or cleaning, then we start moving in a random direction. We're far enough away from the sidewalls to take a step in the current moving direction. Cat horizontally by current state step size x. Ran into a sidewall. Check which wall. So we ran in. We ran into the right wall, specifically with this one. We ran into the left wall, specifically with this one. We use scratching right and scratching left. Same kind of check here, but top and bottom walls. If we're far enough away from the walls that we're able to take a step in the direction we're going. Move vertically by the current state step size Y. We ran into one of the walls, top or bottom. So then we check specifically, we ran into the bottom wall here. Specifically, we ran into the top wall here. Get code, that's just gonna happen. Variable. It's because I have two copies of the file. It's kind of weird. Variable to store the timestamp of the previous touch event. Initialize the touch overlay. Yeah, so we made it all the way through the class, actually, and we're back out to user code. Create the display IO group, background group. Yeah, we did all of this earlier. Okay, I'm going to save this. I'm going to copy it back to learn guide repo and then check the diff and kind of skim mostly. I mean, we made a lot of uh, a lot of docs improvements and things. We also added the whole touch point stuff because all of that was new. Hasn't been pushed yet. And I think I'm going to try to make some fallback behavior for the, uh, the non-touchscreen version. So I'm going to run and grab a device without a touchscreen. Going with the fun house. And I think basically we will just need like maybe a try accept or something, or maybe we should just use maybe we should uh, make an explicit boolean. I think I like that better actually. So 
So I'm going to copy it from the repo. Put it on the funhouse. So the first thing is it should fail to import the touchscreen. Screen is optional. So this way it will not it will not crash. touch overlay except for on this device it's going to be false instead of true touch overlay so basically not very much is going to change we're going to have this If use touch overlay, call update. Basically, all of this is if use touch overlay. Basically, all that goes inside. Okay. I'm gonna restart it here. Starts in the center. Just to go down and left this time. Hit it to the corner, started scratching the left wall. Started running to the right, decided to take a nap. Woke up, running to the right. right wall scratching all right i think we're good because we don't have the uh we don't have the touch on this one and it doesn't crash and it does work basic part right we can't touch it and place the laser dot but we wouldn't have a way to tell it where to go so makes sense it does seem to work which i did want to keep it running on devices without the touch overlay even though it's more fun when you can touch it and then uh, tell it where to go, place the laser dot. So now, as one last sanity check, I am going to plug the Pi portal back in. And update the code back to the Pi portal from the learn guide. Oh. No, I should actually, I need to do this. Unplug the Pi Portal, plug back the Funhouse. We changed the code on the Funhouse. We need to copy it from the Funhouse back to the repo. Yeah, let's use touch overlay. So we want this, copy this. This over to the repo, paste it, save it. Difference, yeah. Now we have our try catch, we have our use touch overlay, all of our other new changes. Okay. Including down here, we have if use touch overlay. And when we touch up, 
Let me set up touchscreen. I guess we could get rid of this part too. Use touch overlay because technically we're creating the circle, moving it off the edge, and then just never using it. We could choose not to get have one more if statement in here. Matter too much. Eventually, maybe we could, uh, you could have a way to set where it goes without a touchscreen. Like, maybe if you had a D-pad or something, you could move it around, but... Okay. Edited it again. So, since I did change it again, I'm gonna copy it. I'm gonna run it back to the Funhouse. This is what's still plugged in. Make sure it's still working fine. Should be because we didn't shouldn't have broken anything. Theoretically. This would not create the circle this time, so if we had accidentally tried to use the circle for something, then it would crash, but we are not. That's good, so I think we're okay here. So now we're gonna go back to Pi Portal. Copy it from the repo to the Pi Portal. And make sure the touching still works. Which it does not because I did false. So also in the learn guide repo, I'm also going to change this code to be true. And then I'll, as part of the guide, it'll say like if you're not using a uh, device with a touchscreen, then set this to false. But it's actually good that it didn't work because it was false. But now it should be true. And now it does work so I can touch and we get the laser dot. It follows. It's kind of fun to make it follow. I don't like going around in a circle like this. Kind of fun with real cat too. Nice. Okay. I think we're there. The only code we added was like if use touch overlay, which is I mean, I could write a sentence above it, but like the sentence is going to be very, very close to the exact same thing as the code. That's one of the nice things about Python. If you uh, set up your variables and stuff and do things correctly, you end up with code that reads a lot like English. So I don't really think we need to actually put a comment above it since it's very, very kind of self-explanatory what that particular if statement does. Um, so I think we're good. So we set this back to true. So basically what I'm going to do now is run the uh, pilot and the code formatting on this and then push it and make a PR. And then I'll probably be done for the evening, I think, for now at least, working on this and streaming. Uh, I may get back into uh, working on this in a little while. I'm going to eat some dinner, I think, and hang out for a bit. I may... Work on the guide some tonight, but I probably won't stream. Um, but we got the code all taken care of now. We found, figured out there was a bug. We got it tracked down and fixed, which is nice. We got a lot better documentation strings now. Everything is all set for touch and non-touch. We're pretty much like got the code like totally wrapped up now. I thought I was done before, but that bug bug took us by surprise. And then I'm happy that I also went through it because the documentation comments were not as good. So we are going to, I think we have update NicoCat. So we made a new branch for this. Yeah, that makes sense. 
Um, black is the code formatter. Black T 535 code pi. Hmm. Eco cat black T I three five code. Okay, that reformatted. Should not change the second time. Left unchanged. Makes sense. Good. Okay. Uh, pilot. Uh, dot dot. Up dot pilot um, code. Why is that not auto completing? Hmm. Okay, there we go. Oh boy. Uh, okay, okay, hold on, hold on. This is wrong. This is a uh, RC file. Dot dot slash dot pyland RC. Okay, that's much better. Whew. Okay, line too long. 475. I mean, I don't know why black didn't change it. Does black not have a max length? I mean, that's one of the things it does, I thought. Is this set to something different? We're far enough away from the side walls to take a step in the current moving direction. One seventy eight line five eighty. Just use palette twice, probably. Nico palette. So the, we should, I mean, honestly, we should change the outer one, too. We have background palette, which is good. This would be for the uh, dot, laser dot. Here, this should be laser dot palette. But these are all descriptive. Not only are we not reusing the same name, they all actually tell you what they're for. All right, one more. Too many statements. Yeah, that's probably just going to be happening. 37. Update. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff in update. I mean, that's kind of the crux of update is it's meant to be called once per iteration frame and do everything. I guess we could break it down farther. Like we have an animate function. We could have a move function too, I guess, and that would refactor some of this code to a different function. Move makes it sound like it would be end user callable to do something though, and it really wouldn't be. I guess animate kind of does as well. Animate I was calling from the end user before update. I think I'm going to leave it and just we ha we already have too many branches. I think let's do too many statements also. Too many statements. Okay. 
Maybe at some point I'll do another pass and refactor this more, but no, I think it's not not too bad really. Um, okay, so I did. It's just code format. It's just pile and stuff. It shouldn't have changed anything functionality wise. But I am going to take a copy and just sanity check back on the Pi portal. Paste it. Save it. Save it. Seems good. Okay. Touch interaction and doc strings. And we ran pylint, we passed, and we ran black, and we passed. But we should pass in the action CI also. And we gotta update Nico Cat. Only file we actually touched. EcoCat, touch interactions, and doc strings. This version, this is a new version of the NicoCat CircuitPython project. This version has optional touch interaction. User can touch the display to place the laser dot that Nico will chase. Place a laser dot that Nico will chase. Also updated several doc strings. And yeah, the guide will document all these variables right towards the top here. These will be the main ones. Like if you want to customize it just a little bit, those will be the kind of things you can change. Of course, if you want to customize it further, you could always just take apart the code and do whatever you want with it, right? You can always dig through it and just change the behaviors however you want. But high level things, background color, you know, laser dot color, Step size, a couple of basic things like that. You can uh, you can modify those. See what those do. So I think we're good here. Create this. Uh, all right. Yeah. So this thing will run actions. Hopefully it'll pass. If not, then I'll uh, I'll figure out what's wrong with it and, and get it fixed. But I think I'm gonna head out for now. So thank you to everybody who watched. I will catch you all next time. Probably. Um, Saturday, 10 a.m. Central Time. That should be the next time I'm back for sure. Uh, maybe, maybe one evening in between now and then. Who knows? Um, but definitely, if not, then uh, Saturday, 10 a.m. Normal Time. I will be back then for sure. So uh, follow me on uh, Twitch here if you want to get a notification whenever that is. Uh, but yeah, thanks all. I'll catch you all next time.